just heard was the first of 24 Caprichos de Goya by Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco, written after engravings of the Spanish painter Francisco de Goya. So the next tune up is uh, another uh, famous piece from the guitar repertoire, the Rondo in A minor by Dionisio Aguado. Uh, it's got that opening theme that's somewhat reminiscent of the theme from the third movement of Beethoven's Pathétique, uh, and I quite like it because I think it's about as close as you can get to Beethoven written for guitar.
To finish my half of the program, I'll be playing the first three movements from Collectici in Team by Vicente Asensio. He's a Valencian composer, and this suite was originally written for Narcisco Yepes. Uh, the way I would characterize these three movements, if not all of the suite, is that they have uh, really sort of simple melodies that you would find in a Spanish folk song, but the harmony underneath is jazzy and more complex.
Thanks very much for watching, and I uh, hope you all enjoy the great Bill Cannon Geyser's half of the concert. See you later. Well, hi everybody. I'm Bill Cannon Geyser, coming to you live from, well, not really live. I, this is pre-recorded. Um, but uh, I'm, I feel alive, and uh, I'm coming to you from my, my house, uh, sheltering in place. But boy, I, I wish I was with all of you in person, playing this recital in a beautiful concert hall in Boston. Um, it's such an honor for me to be part of this festival, and I've known Elliot Fisk for so many years, and I was so honored that he asked me to be part of it. And just really happy that we're doing, we're still doing it, even though it's not in person. There were so many things we wanted to do uh, in person, you know, workshops, master classes, and especially the putting a guitar orchestra together. Uh, we'll do it in the future, but uh, for now, it's great that we're still interacting and. I want to thank Elliot and everybody involved. And before I, I go on at all, I want to make sure we shout out, uh, have a big hand. Let's have a big hand for Aitan Banavi, uh, who just represents such a, a wonderful new breed of classical guitarists. And I'm a, I'm a big fan of Aitan, and it's an honor to, to follow him. So when Elliot and I were talking about uh, the, the pieces I might play in this little program, I mostly wanted to do very recently composed works that were actually written by dear friends of mine. Um, but I thought I'd just start with one more traditional piece uh, by a guy who I, I sure wish he was a friend of mine, because if, if I was a buddy of Manuel de Falla, I, I would have bought him a drink and said, hey, Manny, can, you know, can you write a, some more pieces for guitar? I mean, more than just that one little one, like, you know, maybe concerto, couple sonatas, you know, that, you know, the guitar quartets, maybe, you know. Um, but uh, even though he only wrote the one very short homenaje, uh, his pieces, especially orchestral pieces, are just so imbued with the spirit of the guitar. And uh, I've arranged, you know, solo pieces and guitar quartet pieces based on Faya. And it's, I always thought, it's almost like he's writing for one big guitar. And... One of the pieces that really captures that, I think, better than any of them is the Miller's Dance from uh, The Three-Cornered Hat. And, uh, well, here it is.
So now I'd like to play a piece by someone who uh, was a dear friend of mine, and sadly we lost very recently, um, talking about Frank Wallace. Many of you in, in Boston, I'm sure, uh, knew Frank. He was a, a real part of the guitar and the early music scene in Boston for many, many years. And um, uh, you know his, his spirit and his humor and his incredible playing and compositions. And um, I actually have this, you know, long history with Frank. Uh, and I'll, so I'll tell you a little story. It's basically when I was about 13 or 14, um, I really hadn't had a, any kind of serious classical guitar teacher. I was sort of self-taught. And I went to a summer music camp in New Jersey uh, called Apple Farm, A-P-P-E-L. And uh, Frank had just graduated from uh, uh, San Francisco Conservatory. And I guess he got his uh, summer gig teaching guitar to these campers. And uh, he probably expected, you know, to be teaching them like, Kumbaya, my Lord, Kumbaya, you know, you know kind of stuff. Um, so we met and the first thing I played for him was Villalobos Prelude Number no. 5. And so he was really excited and I was so happy to have a, a real teacher. And, you know, I learned so much and we really had a blast that summer. Um, and it kind of started me on this, you know, path of, of getting real serious about classical guitar. And apparently right after that, he sort of went up to Boston, not knowing anybody. And he, he was looking for some musical activities and he answered like an ad and met uh, some early musicians and met this woman named Nancy Knowles, who ended up becoming his wife and his lifelong musical partner. They, they formed a uh, ensemble called Live Oak Ensemble. And he kind of put classical guitar aside and really focused on early music. He, he, he learned Baroque guitar and lute and theorbo, and he was a great singer. And he arranged and wrote all kinds of music for this group for many years. And they were doing wonderfully. And probably about 20 years later, um, I had a solo concert in Boston and Frank heard about it and he decided to come check out his old camper student, you know, and Apparently, he told me this later, the next morning, he kind of cracked open his classical guitar case because he hadn't played in years. And he started playing classical guitar again. And from that point, he devoted himself to really getting back into classical. He became a really accomplished, beautiful player, but especially a great composer for classical guitar. And he's got a, a really big catalog of works, all so many different styles, like uh, some very contemporary things, some based on early music, some more folkloric, um, all over the map, jazzy things, it's just all kinds of stuff. And um, I, I kind of wanted to highlight his music and, and actually dedicate this concert to Frank's memory, because you know, we had such an important connection and his connection to Boston. Um, so I'm going to play three pieces uh, from uh, three movements from his Sweet Lady Slipper. And the first one uh, really shows his interest in, in early music. It's, it's based on a, a Renaissance Spanish uh, song. It's from the Cantigas de Santa Maria. It's called Cantiga. The second one is called Pavan for a Dying Prince. And it was it's obviously a nod to the Ravel's Pavan for a Dead Princess. And it's a very simple block chord study, but it's really wonderful how Frank makes this contrapuntal texture come out of this block chord uh, re repetitive pattern. It's great. And then the last one, uh, it's called Zar, and it's a real fun piece. It's, he told me it's based on an Egyptian dance, but it's also got this um, like polyphonic, polymetric kind of groove thing to it too. That's uh, really fun, kind of like a like a spinning wheel kind of thing. So um, just dedicating this to Frank and uh, I encourage everybody to check out his music. Um, you can find a lot of it on his website. He's written all these studies and pieces with voice, uh, obviously, and large ensemble. Uh, so this one's for you, Frank.
Thank you, Frank. Now I'd like to play a piece by uh, another good friend of mine, uh, Mark Small. Mark is uh, well known in the Boston musical scene. He uh, teaches at Berkeley and he's a, a very respected uh, critic and columnist, essayist for Acoustic Guitar Magazine, Classical Guitar Magazine. And I've known Mark for decades. And uh, in a way, Mark is sort of indirectly responsible for a collaboration between LAGQ and the jazz giant, uh, Pat Metheny. And uh, basically it was when we were just starting to come up with some of the repertoire for our Guitar Heroes record, I was talking to Mark and saying, boy, it'd be so great if, if we had a piece by Pat Metheny to play. And he said, well, you know, I, I arranged this beautiful piece by Pat called Letter From Home for two guitars. And he, I could arrange it for four. And I said, oh, that would be great. Um, so he arranged it for us. We recorded it. And then Mark was able to slip Pat a copy of the CD. And I think that's kind of how we got onto Pat Metheny's radar. And many years later, we met at a festival and Pat said, hey, I might write a piece for you guys. And we were like, okay. And it, it turned out that Pat wrote this 25 minute sort of magnum opus for us called Road to the Sun. And, uh, you know, thanks, Mark. You know, uh, just about a week ago, I got an email from Mark and he said, you know, Bill, I've been writing a new piece for solo guitar and I was thinking about you and can I send it to you? And, and I said, sure. You know, so I, I got the music and I thought I'm going to play this piece. And, um, so this is kind of like world premiere, uh, of this new piece by Mark Small. And the title is please thank Lyle Mays. So those of you who are Pat Metheny fans know that Lyle Mays is a original member of the Pat Metheny group, you know, worked with Pat for decades, um, an amazing keyboard player and composer. And sadly, we lost Lyle Mays in February to cancer. Um, Mark wrote this piece as a, he calls it an homage to a brilliant jazz artist. And he kind of captures some of the really ebullient uh, groove kind of styles of Lyle's playing and, and compositions. There's this great little blues section, a little more serious uh, driving section, and then this beautiful uh, sort of epilogue uh, expressing the sadness of, of losing him and the beauty of his music. So the title, Please Thank Lyle Mays, uh, Mark explained it. He said when, when Pat would acknowledge members of the band at the end of the, the concerts, instead of saying, Everybody, let's have a big hand for Steve Rodby or and let's clap for Dan, Danny Gottlieb. It, he would say, please thank Lyle Mays. And so this is Mark's way of having all of us thank Lyle Mays for all the beautiful music that he left us. So here we go. This is um, this is Please Thank Lyle Mays by Mark Small.
Thank you, Mark Small. Thank you, Lyle Mays. I'm going to kind of take a left turn here and uh, get out a capo. And what's this? Oh, it's a little mini Allen wrench. I'll explain. Um, so I'm going to affix this to the seventh fret here in order to play a piece by another really good friend of mine, Brian Johansson. And Brian, um, he's, he's a composer uh, out of Portland, or, uh, Oregon, and he's really one of the most creative, prolific musical people I know. I just astounding how much great stuff he's able to produce. Uh, and um, I've you know worked with him on a number of projects with LAGQ, uh, and I know a lot of his solo pieces. He's he, quite a few years ago. He sent me a solo recording he made, um, and it had this piece, the Magic Serenade, on it. And I, I called him up right away. I said, "Drop what you're doing. Send me the music to this. I got to play it now." And uh, I've been playing it for a long time, and it's just one of my favorite pieces. So Brian asks that a capo be affixed to the seventh fret. And I actually put this little Allen wrench just behind it to raise the strings up behind the fret. And so you can actually not just pluck the notes on this side, but you can pluck them on this side. And it's one of those clever things that Brian thought up is so simple, but it makes the guitar really have this wonderful harp-like effect. I don't want to give too much away, but um, just go ahead and play it. This is this is the Magic Serenade.
So I enjoyed playing that piece by Brian Johansson so much. I actually decided to commission him to write a new piece for me um, about a couple of years ago. And it was part of a larger commissioning idea I had. Um, I, I was interested in asking composers to think about the migrant refugee immigrant experience somehow in their lives um, and reflect that in music. And it, it was part of a overarching idea called the Diaspora Project. And it's it's a, a few pieces. I'll finish the show today with uh, one of, another one of that project. So when I asked Brian about this, he, the idea he came up with was that apparently his maternal grandfather uh, emigrated from Ireland and settled in North Carolina, kind of in the Appalachia area. And he said the way that the family made a living was the what they did to support themselves in Ireland. They were making whiskey. And that worked apparently pretty well until Prohibition when they all became essentially outlaws. And uh, Brian said when he was growing up, he heard his grandfather telling stories about, you know, making the still and, and getting the whiskey and then the feds coming and they had to break everything down and run for the hills and, and all this. So he wrote this wonderful piece. It's actually a four movement piece called The Bootlegger's Tale. And uh, I'm going to do the first two movements of, of The Bootlegger's Tale. And, um, you know, it, it really gave Brian a chance to kind of explore his inner, you know, Celtic roots. And uh, if the first move, oh, while I'm talking, I better take this capo off and get getting detuning for this the drop detuning piece um so uh the first movement it's kind of in the form of a passacaglia and it's called a lament for a broken still which is great because um for a bootlegger there's nothing sadder than having a broken still and the second movement is called Ode to Whiskey. And uh, he gives it a little subtitle, uh, Ode to Whiskey with a couple of doubles. And, uh, and this one, he kind of freely mixes um, Celtic sort of jigs with uh, Appalachian fiddle tunes. And it kind of morphs the two together in a very clever way. So hope you enjoy a shot of the bootlegger's tail.
It's a lot of fun. So I'm going to finish my little recital here uh, by sharing the, another piece that I commissioned on this diaspora project. And uh, this is going to be me performing with the USC Guitar Orchestra. How, you may ask? And the answer is by Video Magic. Um, and part of the reason I wanted to put this together was um, one of the goals of the Boston Festival was for us to convene the guitar orchestra there and to perform a piece by Sergio Assad that I commissioned for this diaspora project uh, called The Walls, appropriately. Uh, it's a five movement work depicting various historical barriers that were erected to keep the other out. Uh, Chinese wall, Berlin wall, the West Bank wall, uh, but one of them, the second movement, is called Hadrian's Wall, which is, which was the barrier erected by Emperor Hadrian in about 200 AD uh, in a very futile attempt to keep the Scots out of England. Um, and the piece sort of begins with uh, kind of Ben-Hur, like Roman galleon uh, rollicking kind of tune. And then the Scots enter, and there's a very very good bagpipe imitation that Sergio uh, created. Um, it was a lot of fun to put this project together. Basically, I uh, conducted a video and then all my students at USC uh, recorded their parts and then we edited it all together, but we worked a lot on it and um, hope you really enjoy it. And um, want to say thanks to everybody who was involved in this, in this project and involved in this great festival. Uh, I hope to see all of you in person real soon. And uh, with that, I give you the USC Guitar Orchestra with me playing along and conducting. See you sometime soon. <laughs>